Pam here from Creative Homescaping. Today I'm going to continue my 1000 item declutter. I'm hoping that this is the last round. Although it doesn't mean I'm going to be done with my decluttering. I may just try a different type of task, maybe a 15 minute a day declutter or the minimalism game or maybe uh, something else. So if you have any suggestions, please leave me a comment down below. Otherwise, stay tuned to see what I decluttered in this last round. So here are the items I am going to get rid of as part of this last round of decluttering. These aren't everything. I have to find a few more, but um, I'm going to look for those in a little bit. I, in this section here, I have some makeup items. There's this Cover FX mattifying primer. Um, this is almost empty, so I'm going to go ahead and tr trash that. And then this pamphlet came with some eyeshadow that my daughters gave me. I've been hanging on to it, but I never looked at it, so I'm not going to hang on to it anymore. I'll just recycle that. And then I have this little brush that came as a gift in an Ulta order one time. And then this is eyebrow wax, I think. It's very dark. And the other thing is, is I have trouble with eyebrow waxes. They, they make my eyebrows itchy. So I'm going to get rid of those four things. And then I have some cat toys. This one, well, now it's not doing it. This one makes a noise. There you go which scares my cat. The only, we have two cats, the one who plays with toys, she gets scared by that noise. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And then this is a scratching mat that you can hang off of a door. And we've tried it both on the door handle and on the ground and the cats don't use it. So I'm just gonna get rid of that because it's like taking up room. This was a soap and lotion dispenser Holder that came as part of a set but the problem is is you can hear that it's very wobbly and when you go to push on the pump it becomes unstable so I'm gonna just donate this in case somebody wants to make a craft out of it but you can also see it um, gets discolored by water and moisture which isn't very good for hand soap so I'm gonna get rid of that I have four containers here no, I can count. Three containers here. I've moved away from using plastic containers. Someone brought these over with some things in it for a party and I'm, uh, I'm gonna get donate these as well because I don't use those anymore. And then in the back here, we have this TV VCR stand. This is something we used, oh, many, many years ago when our daughters were little, we had a portable TV that we put in our minivan before the days of them having the screens in the cars and before the days of videos being available on your phone. So we would put the TV on this stand. We actually got rid of this TV a long time ago, but never got rid of the stand for it. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then we move on to these items. And these are the rest of the ballet shoe items that I had planned to get rid of. Um, I mentioned in another decluttering, I had gotten rid of some thread and elastic. This time I'm getting rid of these point shoes. My daughter had to stop dancing and because it was sometimes very difficult to find the style of shoe that she wore, we had ordered a bunch of bunch for her she, before she went away to a, a summer intensive program that uh, ABT put on, but she didn't end up using most of them. Uh, these two pairs, she had already sewn the ribbon and elastic on, but she hadn't actually ever worn them. And then these three, they've never had any ribbons put on them. They're still in the box. And this brand, Russian Point, um, is the brand that most of the girls at her studio wore. Um, and then I have just some of the ribbons that we had bought to go on the, on the shoes. And then the stitching kit for... Uh, sewing them on and in case you are not familiar with ballet the shoes come without any ribbons or elastic sewn onto them because each dancer will put them in a specific spot that works for their feet and so you need to have a, a, a kit with some very thick thread I don't know if you can see this it's 
it's very, very thick thread. It's um, Some people use dental floss, but they sell these little kits that have a heavy-duty needle inside of them, and then it works kind of like dental floss. You can kind of pull it and cut it off there at the at this little thing that sticks up. And for those of you who also have never seen what a point shoe looks like up close, this is a point shoe. And this is what's called the box. And you can hear that, it's very hard. Some people think that there's wood in there. There's no wood in there. This is layers of fabric and glue. And then it's coated on the outside with satin. Most people cut the tips off of the shoes because the satin's very slippery. I know these haven't been worn because they haven't had the tips cut off. They are a little dusty, however, because they were sitting in a closet. Um, so most people cut the tips of the satin off so that it doesn't uh, make them slip when they go up on point. And then this part of the box that extends down here, these are called the wings. This is the shank. The length from here to here, that's the vamp. And different styles of point shoes have different lengths. So if you have shorter toes, you can get a shorter vamp. If you have longer toes, you can get a longer vamp. And these Russian points have all kinds of different combinations of um, vamp length and width. So you can see here, this model says it's an E, that meant it was an Entrada model. The size is European. Here's the width the vamp, and then the shank, which is medium firm. So you can get um, different different uh, strengths of shank. So the, the uh, stronger your foot, the less support you need from the shank, which is leather. Here you can see. Um, the weaker your foot, when you're first starting, you might need a stronger shank. That's one reason um, with, we used to like to get this brand of point shoes for my daughter because you could change, you could vary that. And then I'll show you how the ribbons are shown on. You may or may not be interested in this, but um, you may not have ever seen this if you don't have, if you never did ballet or a child never did ballet. So uh, most people put elastic on their shoes to help hold the heel in place. And then Here's the stitching on the elastic. You have to do this. Some people do it on the machine, but we just did it by hand. You get, get more control. And then here's the stitching to put the ribbon on. And the way you figure out the placement of this usually is by folding the heel forward on the shoe that has no ribbon or elastic. And then you put the elastic towards the back side of the fold, and you put the ribbon towards the front side of the fold. There. But you get, you might adjust that a little bit depending on your foot shape. So that's it. There are, um, this particular brand does not have a drawstring in here. A lot of them will have a drawstring to help Pull this part of the casing tight, but um, things I see in pictures sometimes are the drawstring sticking out with a bow. Dancers never do that. They tuck the bow in, and then when you wrap it around your ankle, sometimes they show the bow sticking out in front of the leg, but the dancers never do that because it would come undone while they were dancing potentially, so they always tuck the ends of the ribbons in underneath the ribbon as it's been laced up. I am keeping one pair for her memory box, but the rest I'm getting rid of. So all together, I'll count this up with you. The four makeup items, cat toys, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. So that's, Everything I have out now, I think I had 29 items left to go, so I need to find eight more items, and then I'll be good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I'm going to donate these items to her old dance studio in case there's somebody who could use them. 
So here are my last items that are part of the Thousand Item Declutter. These are books that I pulled out of our bookcases that are primarily children's books. Um, I know my daughters want to keep some of their books they had when they were young, but I am pretty sure they won't miss these because I don't think they ever really read these in great detail. These three are more reference books. These two are stories. And then these were actually my books when I was little. And there used to be one more, but it fell apart. But the rest of these are in pretty good shape still. So I'm going to donate all of those. So here's my total from last time, 971. This is my 12th round of decluttering. I have 29 items. And that brings me exactly to my 1,000. But I did decide to throw in one extra book. So I th this is actually going to be one bonus item, so 1,001 items decluttered. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this series of decluttering. If so, please leave me a comment down below and give me a big thumbs up if you did like it. If you're new to my channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing. I do home organization, decluttering, home decor, hauls, and those sorts of videos. Thanks for tuning in today, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.